football is back. What's good, Bills Mafia? It's good to be back. I missed you. But enough, enough of the sappy nonsense, all right? We have a real-life Buffalo Bills National Football League game to talk about. So let's do just that. Let's dive right into the problem players. I think the player that's going to cause the most issues for Buffalo in this game is Quinnen Williams. And not necessarily in the way that you might think. Buffalo did beef up their interior offensive line this offseason with two new guards, which in theory helps. But again, the issue isn't with guards one-on-one, -on -one, it's with double teams. Quinnen Williams is gonna get double teamed. And that sounds great. You're neutralizing their best player on that line. He's gonna be less effective. But the issue comes in with Spencer Brown, the Bills right tackle. He sucks, he's a weak link. If you took Spencer Brown off the Bills offensive line last year and placed him with a 16th ranked average right tackle, the Bills would have a top 10 offensive line. He literally brings them down to like dog, doo-doo, poopy, bad. Those double teams leave those weak links for easy exploitation. They're vulnerable. The Bills are vulnerable on the right side of their line. Williams is one of the few defensive tackles in this league that can truly take over a game and the Bills have to find a balance of neutralizing him with double teams, but also protecting their weak links that they know they have in guys like Spencer Brown. Now I'm not just here to dog on our own guys here, but we saw him last year. I believe he was battling some injuries. Can't have Josh Allen running for his life again. It's just, it's so sad to see how they went out last season. Keep him upright, keep him in the pocket. He can do damage on the run, but let's let's try to keep him doing the damage in the pocket, please. And that starts with Spencer Brown being a dog. Another player Buffalo's gonna have to watch out for and you don't wanna throw his way, it's Sauce Gardner. Already regarded by many as the best corner in football just after one season, which is quite the feat to do. He was an all pro, he won defensive rookie of the year. He's a good player. He's very handsy, very physical. Might be known for being a little too handsy, you know, getting away with a little something, you know, the little, well, Doug, let's not take, let's not hold that against him. He's still a very, very, very good corner and one of the best. Have to take advantage of what's given to you in this game. He's going to be on Stefan Diggs. He's going to be traveling with him. That's just what it is. And in reality, he probably locks Diggs down. I know Josh is just going to want to give the ball to Stefan Diggs. You know, they're good friends. They're good buddies. Sometimes, you know, Alan likes to force his balls into places they shouldn't be. I should, I can't say that out loud. I trust Josh to make the right read, make the right play. I love Josh Allen, great quarterback. We've seen Josh Allen though. He gets a little antsy out there when things aren't going his way. He forces the ball to guys like Diggs a lot when he shouldn't. He's thrown in double coverage when he's just not open. He'll just throw it to him. And that's fine, he's Stephon Diggs. I don't take that chance. But against Sauce Gardner, maybe a little less I'd take. I, it's, I wouldn't take it as often, if at all. Guys like Gabe Davis and Duncan Kay, Dawson Knox, Trent Sherfield, Deontay Hardy, they're gonna have to step up. James Cook is gonna have to have a great game to alleviate some of that pressure. And it all around, it all connects and it all help attack Sauce Gardner. Do what you gotta do to get the job done. Just please don't throw any interceptions. I don't wanna hear it from Jets fans. Please, Alan, please. Thank you. Another player that the Bills just absolutely cannot overlook is wide receiver Garrett Wilson. Let's talk some facts. The Bills have a great secondary with lots of depth. When they've got a four man rush, they're like a no fly zone. When they blitz, they look like a bunch of high schoolers. I say that because Sean McDermott's now calling the plays on defense. He's more aggressive. That's what got him the job. Leslie Frazier is gone. He's more passive. The Bills are primarily a zone scheme team, but Trey White is going to be that guy who is on Garrett Wilson when he can be. Trey has to return to form. He has to. We're talking about a cut candidate if he doesn't. Let's let's face the facts here. Enough of the Bills side of this. Garrett Wilson is the only player that I really fear on that offense. You can double team him, rush for and get some pressure. I have faith that the Bills can lock him down and he won't really be as effective. Do I trust the Bills to Make the smart choice? No. One wide receiver having a great game isn't the end all be all. All that matters at the end of the day is the final score. If he has great stats and the Jets lose, cool. I don't give a shit. If he goes off and they win, now I'm kind of pissed off. Speaking of pissed off, let's talk some pushovers. Those are players that won't piss me off. My only real pushover player is Aaron Rodgers. And that might be a shock to some people, but just let me explain. Let's not get it twisted. He's still Aaron Rodgers. He's still capable of great things. 
but he's not that MVP caliber Aaron Rodgers that we all know and love. Well, we don't love him anymore because he's in our division. He hasn't had a 300 yard game since December, 2021. In reality, you think, oh, 300 yards, who cares? He's scoring touchdowns, winning games. But just let me put this into perspective for you real quick. Let's say Patrick Mahomes went 20 games without throwing for over 300 yards. You would think something is wrong with him. And rightfully so, he's Patrick Mahomes. He's the best in the game. When we're talking Aaron Rodgers, we're talking about a first ballot Hall of Famer, four time MVP, MVP, but as the age catches up to him, he's losing some of his physical ability. He's not that same Aaron Rodgers. He's still going to be better than what the Jets had last season, but he's not MVP Aaron Rodgers. And so I'm not necessarily worried about him. I'll go eat my words if he has a great game, but that doesn't mean he's going to have a great season or have another great game against the Bills. I think the Jets are getting really overrated right now, and a lot of that is due to Aaron Rodgers. Some, there's someone protecting Aaron Rodgers, too, and the other pushover I have is their offensive line. They've got plenty of potential. This Jets O-line has plenty of potential. They've got a 38-year-old left tackle starting left tackle. They've got the worst of the Connor McGoverns, the center, not the guard. Our guy's the guard. And they got Makai Becton, who hasn't played in like two years, starting at right tackle, who looked pretty good when he played, but he was also playing at left tackle. So it's a whole new position for him. I'm just not scared of them, to be honest. Like, that's just as simple as it gets. I'm not really scared of them. Even if the Bills D-line is average, I still think they'll get lots of pressure. Even without Von Miller, I think they'll get lots of pressure. And with Von Miller, they would dominate this Jets offensive line and Rodgers wouldn't be able to do anything. I think the Bills D-line will beat up this offensive line and take their lunch money. Like it's not gonna be close. I think the Jets defensive line can do the same to us. So we have to we have to come ready. I'm sure the Jets are gonna come ready. They know what the Bills bring. They know what the Bills are capable of. They've seen them a lot. They'll see them a lot. Let's see what happens, all right? Now that we've got the Jets out of the way, let's talk more about the Bills. And specifically, let's talk some offensive expectations. Let's be modest about the production in week one for this offense, all right? We all know how the season ended for them. I was in person at that game and Allen just running for his life every play, getting hit constantly. You can't ask him to do much else. He did everything he could. Offensive line has to step up this season. Division rival games are also usually the toughest ones on your schedule. They're going to play us hard. And personally, I don't think Buffalo's offense matches up very well against their defense. I still think Buffalo has great weapons and they'll seize those opportunities that are given to them. But for the fans that are expecting the Bills to just blow them out and put up 40 points and Allen gets five touchdowns and 500 yards. It's not going to happen. Keep it modest. We have to realize new personnel, new way to run in this offense. Still the same scheme. This is going to be a little different. You're not going to be used to what you see right away. There's reason for optimism with those new additions in Don Kincaid, Connor McGovern, Osiris Torrance. Don Kincaid is an X factor in this game for this season. It's allowing the Bills to play more 12 personnel, which will help their run game. Don Kincaid will play a lot of slot, which will put him up against linebackers and safeties. And he's going to cook them. He's Paul Beasley on steroids. Swole Beasley, if you will. I think if the Bills want to have their best chance of winning this game, Don Kincaid will be a focal point because early on, there's not much film on him. Like, nobody knows what Buffalo's going to do out of 12 personnel because they just don't run it. And Don Kincaid being brought in to play more 12 personnel gives the Bills a huge advantage this season, especially early on. Now that we've talked about the Bills' offense, what can we expect out of the Bills' defense? The defense also looked pathetic to end 2022. I was at the game, like I said, very vanilla, very boring. I was in the stands and I could read what defenses they were playing. Imagine what Joe Burrow's doing, what's going through his head. Oh, that's open, that's open, that's this, that's that. It's too easy. Leslie Frazier's out the door and Sean McDermott, the head coach, is calling the plays now. And keep in mind, McDermott's play calling on defense is what got him the job in Buffalo, or at least it was part of it. I don't really see defensive head coaches calling the plays as much, or maybe I'm just a casual and I don't realize that. But one thing you should know with McDermott calling the plays is he is much more aggressive. He's going to take more risks, more chances. The Bills might give up more chunk plays, like more big touchdowns. You might see more plays like Justin Jefferson getting a one-on-one -on -one touchdown for six 60 yards, but you're also, you might see more sacks, more pressures, more interceptions. Guys are going to make plays against them, but the Bills just have to make more plays than the other team makes plays against them. It's pretty simple uh, footballonomics, if you will. Yes, yeah, you gotta uh, you gotta score more points than the other team to win. One of the big issues for this defense is going to be middle linebacker. They lost Tremaine Edmonds in the offseason, and they basically, practically, just, literally just refused to replace him. What, Terrell Bernard? The guy looks like a safety. He's not a linebacker. I mean, he is, technically, but he doesn't 
Like you look at, look up at, I'll put a picture on the screen of Terrell Bernard right now. Does that guy look like a linebacker to you? He doesn't to me. Maybe I'm just crazy. I don't know. Hoyer is healthy. Micah Hyde is healthy. They're back. They might take a step back with age and they didn't necessarily look right in the preseason, but that's also preseason. Let's hope they stay at that all pro form or at least slightly below it because the Bills need those guys to be good. They need them to stay healthy, to have any chance of winning, really. And even in the odd chance that those guys go down, the Bills defensive back depth on this team is crazy. You have DeMar Hamlin and Taylor Rapp who are both capable starters. Worst comes to worst, Christian Benford could slide up to safety. They were talking about putting him there this off season. I think one of the things we'll really notice is the situational play calling will be a lot better. Like, Leslie Frazier had no situational awareness whatsoever. Remember that one play in the Bengals playoff game on third and four when everyone was just lined up on the line and there was nobody deep? Why? Hopefully that doesn't happen again. Hopefully Sean McDermott has a brain, at least two brain cells, because that's more than Leslie Frazier's one, and the Bills will be better off. It's just plain and simple. Simple math, simple economics. When I look at the Bills defense versus the Jets offense, I think it matches up incredibly well in Buffalo's favor. I don't think the Jets have very many threatening weapons out of the passing game. I wouldn't be a little scared of their running game. You know, they got two great running backs in Dalvin Cook and Brees Hall, but I'm not really scared of anybody else outside of Garrett Wilson. Garrett Wilson will do his work. He'll get his reps, he'll get his targets, he'll get his yards, he might get a touchdown or two. God forbid, three. Can't stop everybody. You're not going to allow zero yards. They're going to get some plays. They're going to score some points. It's about slowing them down as much as you can and containing them as much as you can. Now, a new segment I want to introduce to you all this year is my fantasy football stardom sit -em. If you have these guys on your team, you should most definitely start them this week. Josh Allen, Gabriel Davis, and Garrett Wilson, and Don Kincaid. I think all those guys are safe bets to get at least 10 points this week. I think Gabe Davis gets a touchdown. I think Garrett Wilson gets a touchdown. I think Don Kincaid scores a touchdown. I think all four of those guys are going to go off. I think Gabe Davis and Garrett Wilson will both be good for at least 15 points. And I think Don Kincaid will be good for at least 10. You know, tight ends aren't that good in fantasy unless you're Travis Kelsey because they're not really... One, he's a rookie and he does play more of that Travis Kelsey role, but he's a rookie and it's his first game. I think he'll be a big factor, but I don't think it's going to be 100 yards and like seven, eight receptions. He'll get couple receptions, 50 yards, and a touchdown. Now, who should you sit? Who should you absolutely not play? Aaron Rodgers, any of the Jets running backs, Von Diggs, and either of the defenses. I wouldn't start Aaron Rodgers because I just don't think he's gonna have that great a game, to be honest. As for the Jets running backs, there's only so much volume to go around for them. There's two of them, they're both great. You might be able to get away with them as a flex and a 12 man, but if you're playing in a 10 man or an eight man, don't even think about it. Unless one of them gets like a touchdown, then you're like, okay, well maybe I should have started them, but you can't expect everyone to score. Why wouldn't I start Stephon Diggs? I think he's going to get locked down. Last year he went off. This year I just don't think he does it. I think Sauce Gardner will have him on clamps. He's going to get those double teams, which will allow guys like Gabe Davis and Dalton Kincaid to go off like I think they will. Now, as for the defenses, I just wouldn't start him. I just... You, when you're playing fantasy, you pick the defense that's playing a really shit theme. Let's be honest, you gotta stream them every week. These two are not it right now. If you have them, cool, start, I guess. Like if it's your only one, sure. But if you're an odd chance that they're in free agency, stay away from them. Or even if you have two defenses, Pick the other one, don't pick one of these ones. If you have both of them, well shit, uh, figure it out, I don't know. And please don't ask me about kickers, it's like flipping a coin, go play the lottery. I start whoever, everyone kicks field goals. Now I'm not usually a gambling man, but this year I kind of am. So here's my parlay for the Bills versus Jets game this week. I have James Cook getting the first touchdown of the game. I have Garrett Wilson getting a first quarter touchdown and anytime touchdowns from Dalton Kincaid and Gabriel Davis. This game sets the tone for the season. It sets the narrative. Both teams are gonna be competitive. You, Bills have to take advantage of what they can. Take what the defense gives you and just win this football game, please. I am so excited for Buffalo Bills football to be back. I know you are too. We want to see the Bills win. We want to see them win the Super Bowl so badly. I I cut off both my balls if I had to. Monday Night Football, prime time in New Jersey, MetLife Stadium. You don't want to miss it. I think it's going to be a close game. I think Buffalo will pull ahead late and secure the dub to move to 1-0. It's football. It doesn't get any better than this. With that, that is it for this video, Bills Mafia. 
Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to leave a like on this video in the comments down below. Let me know your score predictions for this game. Will the Bills win, lose? Let me know. On your way out, please subscribe. It really helps out the channel and I would greatly appreciate it. We're on the road to a thousand subscribers. So if you're new here, I would really appreciate it if you could help the rest of us get there. And that's all I got. Football is back, Bills Mafia. Let's go Buffalo.